Hello and welcome to this quick tip tutorial. In this episode we're going to cover how I edit time lapses. These can be day to night, all night, all day. It can be whatever time lapse you've got, the editing principles will be the same. So let's dive in. So the first thing we're going to want to do is drag all our footage into the timeline. Little tip if you press backslash next to Z on the keyboard it'll shrink your timeline down to fit within the space then get your sequence settings right i use quicktime apple pro res 422 which yes it's going to take a little bit longer when you want to render the clips but you get in the maximum quality and it'll save you time when you come to export because you can use the previews and it'll export faster than real time and for the sake of best quality make sure maximum bit depth and maximum render quality are checked. So obviously we've got nearly half an hour of footage here. First thing to do is see have a scroll through, see if there's any bits that need cutting out. There isn't in this case. You could stabilize the footage at this stage, that would give you the best results, but you're stabilizing half an hour of footage and that's gonna take a hell of a long time. So the best thing to do is to speed it up first and then move on to the stabilized settings. I'll nest these clips so that they're all one. Always name your sequences, your nested sequences, etc. something sensible so you can identify them. Otherwise, once you've got most of the way through a project, and your bin is full of things called nested sequence one, nested sequence two, etc. It's going to get very confusing. So now that's nested, we can right click, select speed and duration. I always find optical flow gives the best results. And then you can either set a percentage speed or you can set a duration that you want the video to be. And I'll say I want this to be three minutes exactly. So that's three minutes, no seconds, and that last two digits is the number of frames, not fractions of a second. Backslash key again to expand the timeline, and we're now we'll render that out to see what it's looking like. Now that the video's rendered, you can play it through, make sure it's looking fine. Now another tip here that doesn't just relate to time lapses, it's for any video editing. When you've done a step such as speeding it up or stabilizing that takes a long time to render, when you next make a change to your video, it's got to render that speed up or that stabilization again, which is going to take a long time. So this is part of the reason I use Apple ProRes 422. What I can now do now that I'm happy with that speed up, I can bake that adjustment into the footage and then I don't have to render it anymore by simply going to File, Export, Media. And then you just run down and check that everything's correct. Maximum render quality. Now use previews, import into project and optical flow. So you can see by using the previews, we're rendering a three minute clip in one minute. When this clip comes back into the project, we don't need to re-render that speed up effect. So as you can see, it's brought the rendered video in. So I'll clear that off the timeline, bring that in, and it plays through nice and smooth. But as you can see, it's jiggling around a bit so next thing we need to do is stabilize which two ways of doing this the best way is within after effects i'll do it within premiere pro so we go to click on your effects tab and look for warp stabilizer drag that onto the footage it always defaults to a 50 percent smoothness if you've ever wondered why you get rubbish results from warp stabilizer it's because that 50 percent is far too high Really, you don't want to go any higher than about 10 or 15%. Once it's finished reading the data and stabilizing it, you can go through, as you can see, it's stabilized it a little bit, but it's by no means brilliant. The way I prefer to do it, 
clear that out is I'll replace this with an After Effects composition. Right click, replace with After Effects composition. Save the After Effects composition with your project files so that you're keeping everything together. Name it something sensible. Make sure your clip is selected, open the tracker, and we want to stabilize motion, position, and rotation, which will give you these two boxes. And what you need to do is put each of these boxes quite far apart on high contrast parts of the image. Now they're quite small on there, so we'll zoom in a little bit just to make it easier. On that high contrast point there. And I'll take this over here. And then you just click Analyze Forward. Once it's done that, you click Apply. Apply to X and Y. Click File and Save. And then you can close it down and it comes straight back into Premiere Pro. That's done a much better job. So we'll need to render that out now. Sequence, render into out. And now that that's rendered out, we can have a look at how good a job it's done. As you can see, that stabilized it a lot better than Warp Stabilizer did. What we will have to do is, because it's moved the image, you're going to get a few bits of black bars, so we're going to need to scale up very slightly to get rid of those. When you're moving figures like these, if you try and just do it like that, it moves quite quickly. If you press control and then slide with your mouse, you can be a lot more precise with it and then make sure the black bars don't appear. And I'm fairly happy with that stabilization, so we'll bake that in again. I file, export media, double check your settings. I'll, I'll remove that version from the timeline and bring the latest version in. And now we can get onto the fun part, which is color correcting and color grading. So what we need to do is go into effects and search for Lumetri color. Drag that onto our clip. Now I'm fairly happy with how the footage looks at the start, other than I might brighten up the ground a little bit. What I want to do is keyframe everything that I might change so that it's now set and fixed at the start. And then I go to the end of the clip and I'll set about color grading this. This is normally where I'll make the most changes. Now, what I like to do on one of these night to day or day to night time lapse is exaggerate the change in light where we've got to the daytime here i want to make it look a bit more like it's further into the morning by brightening it all up really a case of adjusting to taste here and then what you'll notice is because we fixed all these values at zero at the start as we now scroll back through time you'll see all those values changing bit by bit. So we haven't ruined the start of the clip by changing the color grade at the end. And again, to exaggerate the changing time a little bit more, I might pull the shadows down at the start, bring in a little more tint. So it just exaggerates and speeds up the changing of time. So once you've done your color grade, then it's a case of just simply adding some sound effects, a bit of background music, maybe a voiceover, and that's your time lapse done. So I hope you found this video tutorial. It's longer than the five minutes I try and stick to, but this does cover a whole workflow. So if it was useful, then hit the thumbs up so that YouTube can recommend this to other people. Subscribe to the channel to help me out and check out the other videos that I've got which cover tutorials and drone flying in general. So thank you very much. Goodbye.